agenda. Um, first, just uh, welcome to the new season. Um, I'm Dave Cambridge. I'm the tournament director, if we haven't met before. Um, as far as other board members here, we have Matt Weicker is somewhere around here. He'll be back in soon. He is our um, assistant tournament director. Um, we also have um, Mimi out there. She is um, another board member. She's the coaches chair. So she'll be the one communicating with you guys all, all season long. And Monica Burglar, she's also on the board out there. Um, as far as agenda goes, um, just a couple updates on the board. Um, and then we'll go through, talk about the, the events for this year, um, important dates in the calendar, talk about registration, uh, what invitational tournaments uh, are available, uh, final registration, the actual tournament, and then we have some advice and then Q&A. So at any point, just feel free to ask if you have questions. I don't wanna go too fast for you guys. I'm attempting to record this so that we can put it out on our website so it'll be available for everyone or for anyone who didn't make it. Um, updates, um, Kim Popso was the coach's chair last year and she had to step down from the board just due to personal time constraints and things like that. Um, so Mimi has stepped up to take over as the coach's chair this year. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi, appreciate that. Um, Karen Kane, uh, in case you haven't heard, um, Karen Kane was our uh, on the board. She did all the arrangement with the school, foods, rooms, everything. And Karen passed away last week, suddenly. Um, very shocking, just she, was, didn't show up at school. Um, they called her husband. He went home and found her slumped over. Um, just devastating. So we have a huge hole to fill. I mean, I can't even tell you, I, I don't even know yet how much, what all Karen did. We're still, you know, kind of just reacting to it. Um, so anyway, um, I just wanted to say, say that and I don't know <laughs> what else to say, but Anyway, it's it's a huge hole to fill, so probably going to be a struggle for us this year in terms of getting all that done. But we will um, do our best to uh, you know keep it going. So we uh, fortunately on the elementary side, they do all the same communications with the school, so we have contacts through there. So um, you know we'll we'll get you know we'll get it figured out. But uh, anyway, it's just really a devastating uh, blow to us. Um, events for this year, um, pretty much uh, pretty similar to last year. The new events, um, entomology uh, and Division B entomology, po potions and poisons, helicopter, scrambler, and metric mastery. Uh, for Division C, we have Pretty much the same. The, the new events are entomology, uh, material science, electric vehicle, helicopter, and bungee drop. Okay, so this is just detailing out the new events. As far as alternate events, um, and this is tentative. Um, this is just we have to make sure, depending on how many teams um, sign up. So. Last year we ran everything as alternate events. And that is our goal again this year, it always is. We wanna uh, have as many kids be able to participate as possible. But depending on space at the school, especially lab events or events that have like three kids in them, we just have to make sure like, you know, if we had like 10 teams sign up that weren't there last year, we probably aren't gonna have the space to do a lot of them. But as long as we don't have like a huge, you know, jump up in enrollment, we probably will be, striving to do them all but we just can't commit to that at this point in time um, but these are the events that we can at this point say we can do alternates okay so for division b air trajectory anatomy disease detectives dynamic planet and just so you know this will also go out on our website so you don't have to take notes if you're worried about it um, dynamic planet ecology fossils meteorology mission possible optics, 
Reach for the Stars, Road Scholar, Scrambler and Towers. For Division C, Air Trajectory, Anatomy, Astronomy, Bungee Drop, Disease Detectives, Dynamic Planet, Ecology. Oh, Fermi's gone. I missed that. That's my bad. <laughs> uh, electric Vehicle, Fossils, Helicopter, Optics, Robot Tour, Scrambler, Towers, and Wind Power. Um, our deadline is like December 13th, so we will probably in early December make an announcement on those. Okay, so we'll finalize those probably after the deadline for registration. Okay. Um, just like in past years, disease detectives, we run that first thing in the morning, so that's different from state or national schedules. Um, other than that, we will follow the same conflicts as the state and the nationals. Um, and the experimental design will be self-scheduled in three blocks, just like we've done that in the past. Okay. The other thing is self-schedule events like robot tour. We're gonna we're gonna set that up for half a day. Now we've had instances where that kind of creates a conflict. Okay. So if for some reason, and I know some of the coaches here we've de we've dealt with that with where their kids can't get there in the in the morning because of other conflicts. We will work to, to work them in, whether it's before we start or whether it's you know during lunch or in the afternoon if the B is going. So like we do like, you know, for flight, we do, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So you might be able to just go in the afternoon in the slot. So we will work to work you in wherever. Uh, but some of the events, like, like I said, robot tour, we only had, I don't know, five or six last year. So it's kind of hard to have someone sit there all day for five kids to come through. So anyway, we will work, you know, to fit you in. I don't think we've ever not been able to work someone in, but we just have to, to set it up that way. Okay, important dates. Um, so November 2nd is the State Coaches Clinic, and that is virtual, and that is free. So it's... You can find that information on the state website. There should be a link to it. I don't know if there's anything out there now, but when we get closer. Um, and that's just basically, um, what are they, 40 minute, 45 minute sessions on each event. So there'll be something on each event, kind of reviewing the rules. Um, it's just a good starter starting point to you know, understand what the event is and what the rules are. Um, and since it's free and virtual, you know, take advantage of that. Um, December 5th uh, is, we are planning a workshop at Lance Cruz North. Um, just in case you guys didn't know, Paul Voidenoff, who's the state state president, he, you know, from our region, we've run all of our workshops at his school, which was South Lake, but Paul has now changed schools. He is now Lance Cruz North. <laughs> so, and the other thing about the 5th is that is a Thursday. So we have never done a workshop in the middle of the week. Um, the way things laid out, the state is doing a workshop on December 7th, and they're doing another one on the 14th. A lot of people from our region, there's one in Alpena and one in Michigan, in Michigan State. And a lot of people from our region, uh, people from our board support those workshops. So it's hard for us to do one here when there's one going on somewhere else. So the only way to really fit it in, go ahead, Matt. Oh, yes. Fifth. It was going to be the fourth, but then there was a basketball game. <laughs> so it changed and I didn't, I missed that update. So yes, December 5th. Okay. Um, we're working on the topics. I'm trying to get those out as quickly as possible. Try and get them out quicker this year. Um, event extravaganza is going to be um, December 11th. Okay, and we're gonna try and do that virtually this year. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Um, in the past, it's always been like six to nine at South Lake and everybody has trouble getting there by six o'clock. I have trouble getting there by six o'clock because of traffic and things like that. So we're gonna try it virtually this year, um, see how that works out. So it's gonna be like team sessions um, 
And the other thing about that is, is that if for some reason somebody can't come on the 11th to do it or can't do it online on the 11th, maybe we can have an, you know one or two of them on the 12th or something like that. So, but we're we're shooting to do them all on the 11th virtually. It's just a, it's a, a, the, the goal, we don't always necessarily get that, would be to have our event supervisor talk about the event, talk about the rules, some of the expectations, okay? So it probably won't be a lot different from the coaches clinic, but um, the, yeah, they're like half hour sessions. Students can participate in that. I don't. I don't know. Are, do they? The state coaches clinic. Are they? Do they ask just the coaches to go to that? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I don't see any problem with. I mean, since it's virtual, you know, there's no limits in terms of room space or anything like that. So I don't see why they can't go on to that one as well. Um, no, the, so the state workshops, um, well, that's what we're trying to do again this year is to try and make it free. So what happened last year was, <laughs> well, yeah, it would, because what we did last year was we brought in a uh, manly midget from North Carolina, I think it was, and he was a national event supervisor. We paid for him to come in. So therefore, by us paying for it, I said, if I pay for him to come in, then you have to make it free for our region. So that's the plan again, is to bring in someone from one of the national event supervisors. I'm not sure who, who it will be yet. Um, we'll pay them to come in, and then that will make it free for all of our schools. At least that's the way we worked it last year. So um, that's the, it's not been confirmed yet, but that's the tentative plan. So, But I think the state, what do they want? What is the, the state workshops? There are 10. Depends what we did. What we did last year is we hosted several state workshops around the state, and it was $10 a student or up to $100 a team. So if individual students went, you know, if, the whole, if you sign up for the whole team, it's $100. If you sign up individually, it's $10. I don't know exactly. It's not on the state website yet. What would, what the fees will be, what they will cost, and they're in person, uh, in person workshops um, at MSU at um, Alpena. Alpena is no uh, uh, December seventh. Yeah. In case you want to go up to Alpena for one. <laughs> I don't know if we're doing anything further away than that. No, I think it's Alpena, it's Michigan State, it's Lance Cruz, and then it's Kalamazoo. So. so I would definitely take advantage of anything close by. And our goal as a region is not to charge people from our region for the local stuff. Um, we probably will be charging the other for the people coming from different regions. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, no. It's, this year it's at Michigan State. I thought I updated that. Okay. Yeah. I'll update that before we put it on the website. Last year we did a one off with Yeah. Because the Nationals was at Michigan State a few years ago. Yeah, that's that's my bad. Okay, um, the registration due date is um, we're we're going to be the same as the state. And what Paul told me was that second week in in December. So the thirteenth is that Friday, the thirteenth. So um, that's what I believe is going to be the registration cutoff. If you guys think you're going to be close, it might be a little bit differently than that. But that's what Paul told me. So. Um, in this next one, the NDIA, NDIA sponsorship. So this is where you can apply to NDIA to get money for your team. And I know several teams here got money last year. 
So it's free money that you can use on build events or whatever you need it for. Um, I was on their website last night. I did not see a deadline date. So it was 1231 last year. So I'm going to assume it's 1231 this year. I would say if you want to get some money, go out there as soon as possible and fill it out. Okay. Um, January 11th will be the state workshop, and that's going to be at Lands Cruise North. And February 1st is going to be our Region 7 workshop at Lands Cruise North. So that will be generally in February, we do like build testing uh, and things like that. Okay. Um, fine. Yeah. We'll put them out um, as soon as we, because we got to confirm supervisors or people to come cover them. So we haven't been able to get the dates. What we try to do is in the first workshop, we try to cover as many of the new events as possible. So that's what we'll focus on for the first one. And like I said, the last one is generally focused on testing your your electric vehicle or helicopter or that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, we have not set a date for final registration, but it's usually late February. Um, yes. So, and as far as that process goes, I know it was a little tough last year. We were doing the waivers through a Google form and it was hard for people to see who had done it, who hadn't. So we are working on a new solution for that. It's not been determined yet but it should still be online and hopefully it'll be easier for you guys to see which of your, your students have filled it out yet or not, so. Okay. Uh, Self-schedule, once again, that usually opens, what, I think two weeks before the tournament. We haven't set a date on that yet. Yeah, and there's usually open for about a week, okay? March 15th is our tournament. Uh, April 26th is the state tournament at Michigan State. Sorry about that. Um, and the national tournament, I don't even, I swear, I know I looked, I went and I looked it up where it was at and I thought I updated this presentation, but I don't know if I didn't save it. So um, anyway, so national tournament is uh, May 23rd uh, and 24th, okay? Okay, registration is open, um, and this year we're doing we're we're back to doing state registration as state, and then our regional registration is, and I don't have that link in here, but the the links to both of these is on our website, so you should be able to get to those there. And I think Mimi's already sent that out to everyone, so I see people are registering. Um, one thing, yeah, the state fee is $260 per team for main teams and $100 for alternate teams plus $25 to pay by check. I have a question into Paul. I haven't gotten a response yet because I was looking at it yesterday and I saw that like Susan, like you put in 25 for each team in your registration and the other teams only had it for one. So I don't know if it's $25 per school or per team, so I'm I'm waiting to hear back on that in terms of what I would think per per check. Okay, so yours might be in for for twenty five dollars too much, Susan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So two sixty is state registration, which everybody has to do because the state registration covers all of our insurance and all those sorts of things, which is actually a big chunk of the cost. Um, and then the 70 is just for our regional tournament to run, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, 75. Before we put this on the website, yeah. <laughs> so there's no way. Yeah, 75 and 25. Sorry. So 1213 is the deadline. Yeah. Is it? It says on there. 
the state. That's the date get, Paul gave me. Yeah. I, I can't click on. I'm not a head coach, so I can't see the deadline on the state website. I couldn't find it anywhere out there, but Paul told me 12, 13. So that's why I'm going. That was yeah. I couldn't find it on the website. So that's why I'm, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you have an alternate two weeks, um, do you have to register for both state and regionals or can they stop? Both, yeah. It has to be both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the states, the state fees, that money, part of that money goes to nationals. It covers insurance. Yeah, alternate teams for state is 100. Okay. Um, resources. Um, so the, the state does this uh, coaches corner um, and I think they've already started it. Um, they do it like, I think, I think that might be why Paul's not here. I think there was something tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And they record them yeah. and they're available out there. Yeah. So like, if you go out to this link, it will take you out there and there, there's like a recording out there already. And there's, there's one going on tonight. So you should be able to, to do that as well. So there's a lot of questions, questions from people that are brand new um, that help. It's helpful for brand new coaches to just at least, you know, take a peek at it and see, you know, if there's any questions that help you. Okay, so I checked those out. Um, the state coaches clinic, it's virtual. There should be some national, state, and local supervisors um, will be there. And that's out on the the, the uh, state website. Um, no fees. Um, they do multiple events in the same time slot, so you might need multiple people to cover the event. So look at the schedule up front and kind of Plan out who does what session. And I think all of the sessions are being uh, recorded, like video and audio. So if there's for some reason you can't like get somebody to look at it, it will be on that state website later. It takes a few days to get it um, put up there. Okay, the uh, state coaches clinic is November 7th or 2nd, and that's virtual. Um, no, I just said that, sorry. Um, <laughs> our region seven event extravaganza, like I said, that's it's like a half hour session or 25 minute to a half hour session with hopefully with the, the event supervisor. Um, we don't necessarily have event supervisors for every event yet, so it's kind of hard to, to to say for sure that they'll all be the event supervisors, but we will try to cover every event. We're going to plan to do it virtually um, and we'd like to try and record those as well so that those can be made available. Okay. So we'll plan to start around 6, 630 p.m. and cover all the events. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, Teams is what we're going to plan to use for that. Okay. For the state one, it's, I don't even know. I think it's Google Meet, but it might be Zoom. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, get, we have Teams and we can record Teams. So that's what we're planning to use for Teams. So, um, we, we will put li links on the website and then we'll send an email as well. Once again, there'll be like, you know, four or five, you know, it's going to be like multiple blocks. So there might be, I think we run the, the each event more than once usually. We did in person. In person we did, but I don't know if that's. If we'll do that for teams. Yeah. We'll see. The schedule will be a bit different because it is virtual. I'm also concerned with having one session for each Yeah. I know that I when I when I presented at our extravaganza in person, I've done 
two sessions in a row, but I'm not sure that that makes sense when we're doing it virtually. Um, I would suggest that, you know, as you get your um, event coaches lined up, um, that you tell them about this yeah. and you say, you know, this is going to be December 11th. This is this is a weeknight, right? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Um, and make sure that they know that they can cover their session or another session if they're if their kid is doing something else that they want to watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, rule books are available on the national website. So the soinc.org. Um, you just have to go out there. There's a link to rule books. It asks like who you are. It doesn't really, I mean, it's not like it'll say no, you know, are you a coach or are you a student or are you an official? And then ask your email address. I think they want to be able to email you stuff. Um, and then it will email you a link to download the PDFs. Okay. Um, you can share those with your team. Um, I, I'm not sure what restrictions there are with sharing other than don't like, you know, it's, yeah, like we can't put them on our website. So, yeah, we shouldn't have them either on our website. No, we don't. Um, because anybody can download it from the national website. I don't know why that's still a rule, but. I, there's copyrights and yeah. They're free, but yeah, I think they want to kind of keep control over them. They don't want them just posted everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, part of that is controlling version control and things like that. So, um, on the Macomb website, uh, we have got um, a coach's handbook, which is uh, new and updated. So, if you guys want to take a look at that, especially new coaches, that might be helpful. We went through and did some updates to that this year. Um, calendars with all of our dates. Um, FAQs would, sorry, that would not be on our website. The FAQs would be out on the So Inc. website. So as the season goes along, the rules come out and people will have questions or concerns about the rules that they will send into the national website. So out on the national website, as they like want to clarify a rule or make a change to a rule because something was worded wrong or something like that. The, those will be out on the national website. So if you just go out there, and I think it's FAQ, or there's, there, it should be out on, I don't remember exactly what, what it's called, but you'll find rule changes and FAQs out there linked in. So I think it's rule, rule clarifications. Rule, yeah, that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah, because those, um, yeah, they will make, they will have things out there that kind of tweak, you know, the rules. So you want to look at those frequently. Um, and on our uh, on the phone website, there's also lists of all the events, and they're right now being uploaded. Um, presentations from national supervisors. So those will be available to us too. Yeah, there's there's on, on our events on our on our website, there's some presentation, like she said, presentation from past years. Now just be careful because rules may have changed. So if you, you know, I haven't had a chance to go through and really look at the details of those. So if you pull something down, just make sure it applies to the rules for this year. So that would be my only caveat. As we go along, we're gonna add presentations out there for this year that are current. So we will try to add resources out there to that. Um, the Michigan State website, that's got all your information about the state tournaments. Um, I don't know that there's any specific event information out there. Well, there's coaches clinics and those recordings would be out there. So, and any of the coaches corner stuff, yeah. Yeah, those will all be out there. Okay, invitational tournaments. So it's always good to go to an invitational tournament if you can. Um, just because, especially in things like build events, you don't really, a lot of times, get the pressure to get it done until you have to have it done. Okay, so if you have an invitational tournament that you have to go to, 
then you've got that deadline so that you push to get it done for that, but then you've got time to make tweaks after that, okay? These are on the state website, so you can find them out there, except for, and I just noticed this today, the Canton Invitational is not listed on the state website. I emailed Paul about it um, to let him know, because when I looked at the dates and said, when do we want to do workshops? I said, oh, there's nothing on the 1st of February. So we already scheduled our workshop for the 1st of February. So that means that anyone going to Canton won't be able to come to our workshop. We generally try to avoid invitationals for our workshops, but it's just a C division, is a C division, okay? So there are, unfortunately, we don't have any in our region anymore because the uh, Great Lakes Invitational is not going to be run this year. Um, and Eastside's been gone for a few years. Um, if anybody wants to do a fundraiser at your school and run a tournament, we'd be happy to help. <laughs> Mimi used to run Great Lakes Invitational for Lance Cruz, but she's uh, retired as coach. And so nobody wanted to, <laughs> it's, it, it, it is, it is quite an undertaking to run a tournament. So, um, but it is also a very good fundraiser. So you, you, you bring in a lot of, of money down. So if anybody has interest and wants to run a, uh, an invitational tournament, exactly, let us know. So, but anyway, if you, you know, otherwise I would, I would highly suggest trying to go to one of these. I don't know what do they cost now. I think I saw one was like 95. I think the costs have gone up on them. They used to be like 75, but still it's not a bad, you know, it's not a bad thing to do. You know, it's, a, it's not that expensive and it's, it's good practice for the kids. And, you know, if you've got more than 15 and you're trying to figure out who goes on the competition team, you know, you can, you know, have the kids, you know, different kids try at different invitationals and figure out who's the best, you know, so. And also above and beyond those, um, they're doing the Battle of the States again. I don't know who's participated in that again. It's all virtual. It's gonna be run in January and February. Um, there's information on the state website, I believe, and then at this link. Although I didn't follow that link to guarantee that it's, did I? You can't get to the, you can't get to the link today. Okay. It's nominal. It's, it's, it's like $10 or $9 or something yeah. like that. So, and it's good, you know, get some practice. They run it through Silympiad. I, it was a virtual platform that we used during COVID. <laughs> but they take, you can take tests. It's a good way to get practice tests. I think for the build events, they record them. Oh, okay. So, I yeah, I don't know any of the details. So, uh, in terms of what, what events they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know what events are, they're they're running. Could just be testing events. That would, but either way, it's still a, a good practice for the kids to get in and 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 it's not like I think it's like nine bucks. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Then I I think I did go to this out there last year last night because I think it was like nine bucks I saw on there. So anyway. Okay, final registration, that'll be a few weeks before our tournament, usually late February, somewhere around the 27th or 26th or somewhere in there. Um, have to have your team roster submitted with 15 students and they have to fill out the online waiver, okay? So a parent or guardian has to sign off that they're okay with the student participating in the tournament. Okay. Um, our tournament schedule is still in progress. Um, I hope to have a draft out soon. Um, I've been working on it, um, but we always follow the same conflicts as the national and the states. The only, you know, like I said, the caveats earlier, we do disease detectives early in the morning. So that won't be a conflict for anybody, but keep in mind that at the state, it's gonna go back into the regular rotation. So don't put someone in there and in an event that's gonna conflict with disease detectors. So just keep that in mind, um, unless you want them to only do it for our tournament, because when they get to state, 
if they're in two events at the same time, they're going to be out of luck. Yes. So just keep that in mind. Same with experimental design. We do it in three scout schedule blocks. I'm not sure how the state, is it two blocks for the state? Two blocks. Latest discussion is that it's going to be all day six blocks. Oh, okay. Then maybe that's not any problem at all. Well, it will conflict with our license. Right. So you're going to run in the state, you're going to run all the events. All the events will run. So, so if you're in team, if you're team number one through 10, you have to go. Certainly. Oh, okay. So yeah, it will be. So yeah, so the. But at our tournament, you can schedule any of those three blocks so you can kind of, you won't necessarily have the conflict. So once again, if you're going to put someone in experimental design, make sure whatever other event they're in does not conflict with that at states or else at states, they're going to be not able to do both. Well, the states will follow, should follow the national yeah. disease, disease cycles. Yeah. I'm talking experimental design. Oh, that, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I I didn't see a, a draft schedule for the state out there yet. Okay. Because it just it does show the, the conflicts, um, just like the the national. Um we'll use the online scheduling program for self-schedule events. Same, same plan to use the same program, so it'll be the same process. Um, and you'll get your password um when final registration is complete. And that will open up like a week and a half or so before the tournament for about a week. Okay, team members will come out. Um, I don't know, we didn't have a date, we, we put them out, but probably shortly after registration cutoff, like late December, we'll probably get team members out. Um, and this one is funny because, we got somebody sent a picture last year and we haven't done a, a picture like PowerPoint at our tournament in a while. And I'm like, why haven't we? <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I guess if you guys have a team picture, send it to us. If we get enough, we'll put it in a, just a little PowerPoint that runs before the, the, the awards. Okay. And send them to, to Mimi, coach's chair at McComb, McCombso.org. Okay. Um, read the rules for what you can bring to the tournament. So is it one sheet per team? Is it one sheet per person? Is it one binder? Is it, you know, whatever it is. Um, so check the rules for that and for goggles. Um, can you use a calculator? Um, last year we did not allow any, was it any watches? I think it was no watches, right? because the concern with smartwatches and Googling things during tournaments and things like that. So we're probably gonna run with that same rule this year, no watches. So just let them know, like if they use their watch as a calculator or something like that, that's not gonna work. So like, it, just make sure that they know that. Okay, holding rooms will be made available upon request. Um, I don't know if there's construction this year, but there always seems to be. So <laughs> that was just in there from last year. I didn't take it out, but um, we will we will ask for volunteers again. We're getting better at using uh, National Honor Society students because they need they need volunteer hours, and they're very they're good volunteers, you know. So they're anxious to help and. So we've been we've been working very hard at getting contacts with all the local schools for NHS students. So we will ask you to try and give us volunteers, um, but um, like we didn't we didn't we didn't force anybody to give us three last. We uh, will ask for three, and if you can give it to us, great. Um, but we've been sourcing most of our volunteers through NHS students. So. It's not like we're going to throw you out of the tournament if you don't. But <laughs> if if we get close though, and we haven't gotten enough NHS students, then there is going to be a, a push to get some parents to help us out. So um, let's see. Yeah, we do. We do still need some some supervisors. Um, I don't know. I don't have the list right here. 
but um, if you know of anybody who like would be good for an event or something like that, we may or may not have that event filled. So I guess just let us know if you're, you're aware of anybody who's like a expert in bungee drop. Anybody? Because <laughs> we don't have that one filled yet. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I can I can put together a list of what's open, and then if you guys you know know of anybody through your professional you know world um, or teacher somewhere that you think might might be good on it. Um, former students are are really good resources. We've got several of them who have been running events for us that are in college or graduated college now, um, and those are good resources. So if the, yeah, so I I'll put the. Can you make a note of that? Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll send out a list of what events are open. Um, so, okay. Ideas for um, advice. Um, so, use Remind 101, you know, to communicate with students, especially like the day of the tournament or invitationals or things like that, you know, letting you know, just keeping them up to date on what's going on. Um, uh, you know, getting parents involved, coaching events and things like that. A lot of parents, you know, they may not feel like they really can do anything. Oh, I don't know anything about that event. But, you know, if a parent is willing to provide space in their home, maybe some drinks, set a time, you know, set them down, say here, you know, go work on your event. At least there's a structured time for them to get together and work on their event. They don't necessarily have to be an expert at it. So um, anyway, that's one thing. Um, meet the kids for breakfast on the day of the tournament. You know, uh, we suggest not giving them their bracelets until the day of, because if they get lost, then we don't. We can't replace them. It's that's the process. Once we get the waiver, then we issue a bracelet. Once the bracelet's issued, we have to have it back to replace it. So um, that's the process. So make sure um, if you give them to them the day before, it's on them, okay? Because they're not going to be able to compete without them, okay? Um, make detailed schedules for the kids so they know where to be and when. Um, and let them know what they need to bring. So goggles, pencils, calculators, whatever events, whatever things they need for their event, binders, et cetera. Okay, meet with the team and at least one parent one evening the week before the tournament to set expectations. So just have a meeting before the tournament, talk about the plans when to be where, et cetera. Okay, <laughs> what should a new coach be sure to do? Make sure the team knows it's South Campus, okay? Don't go to North Campus. Um, and if you have any questions, email Mimi. She'll know who to get a, get a hold of if, you know, to cover any of those. Um, start your build events early. Like I said, you know, if you've got an invitational, I remember that my first year coaching for junior high for Division B, and I got we got Mission Possible, which if you've ever seen or coached it, it's so many things. And we didn't do an invitation. So it was like the night, Matt remembers this because his daughter was on my team. <laughs> the night before the regional, and we are in my kitchen trying to make this thing go. And oh we didn't, we didn't meddle. <laughs> But had we had, and I thought the next year we went to an invitation, I'm like, wow, if we had done this last year, we would have had this push to be ready like a month before the tournament and then had a month to tweak it. So it just really, really, especially for build events, the, the invitations, invitations are, are critical because you get a chance to, you know, push them to get it ready early, to um, take it in and go through the process, you know, because on tournament day, when you show up to run your tower or you know break your tower or run your helicopter or run your electric vehicle, it's pressure on these kids. So if they've done it once before, you know, in a in an environment where they're under pressure, it makes it that much better for actual tournament day. 
So it's just a practice for everything. And if they did something wrong, they missed something in the rules, they didn't put a dowel rod on the front, or they didn't do this or that, and they get a violation, well, it's not fun to get a violation in the invitational, but it's better than getting a, a violation at the regional, okay? So it's just a chance to run through everything and know what you're doing, so. That's that's true. Yes, I asked my son about his bridge. <laughs> they, they they have to put two blocks down to put the bridge on, and they didn't. So he was he just ran his bridge over the opening and put all the weight in, and it held the whole thing. And they said, "Oops, we forgot to put the blocks down. Go to do it again." <laughs> that was fun. I think they do ask that, you know, depends on how big the, 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 the invitation is like you, if you go to U of M, it's all student run. They don't, they don't want any, you know, supervisor. So, which can be good and can be bad. You know, I mean, I think U of M, they've been running it for long enough now. I think they've gotten, you know, pretty good at it. So, um, but it's like Matt said, you know, even, you know, you're going to get, varying degrees of supervisors at, at oh, I really then the tournament, you know? So, cause yeah, if it's a complicated, like Mission Possible, you know, finding a good event supervisor for Mission Possible is not easy. Someone who really knows the event, really loves the event and is really into it. So um, if you just, what's that? Yep. Um, yeah, having the parents involved in, in, at, the, at least the first meeting so they know what's going on. Um, reading the rules multiple times. Um, two things, the rules and also it doesn't say it here, but especially for build events on the national website, there's a checklist. Okay. So like the supervisor, when they check you in for electric vehicle, there is a check in, there's a sheet and it says, the, is the vehicle fit within 30 centimeters? Right, I'm just making it up, but 60 centimeters and 30 centimeters, yes or no? You know, and if it's no, that's a violation. So download that checklist, give it to your kids and say, okay, go through this, make sure you meet all of these criteria because if not, you're gonna get a violation, you know? so. Those checklists, it's basically like a rubric that they're gonna they're gonna use to score you. Okay. So a lot of them are did they do this? You know, did they follow their vehicle down down the the, the course? Because that's a violation. So they know what violations that supervisor is looking for. Same with like helicopters or any of the any of the build events. Um, like we said, read the, the rules and the FAQs, you know, and even right up till like right before the tournament. I, I'm not sure how late they cut off changing those rules or putting FAQs out there, but I know there've been, I've seen them out there in like February, you know, so, but. Okay, make sure you arrive early. Um, impound wrist, you have to, you're supposed to have your wristband to impound the device. Okay, um, if there's a problem at impound, they might be able to fix it before the end of impound. And it can be any student on the team. Yeah, to for impound. impound. It doesn't have to be like students in one event. Yeah. Just, you know, to be clear. Because sometimes we have students that do more than one. Um, build. That, that's what they do. They love the building events. So it's hard for them to be on one end of the campus and the other end of the campus because there's only like an hour there. Okay, make sure they have the proper safety clothing and eyewear, um, long pants in labs. I know that was an issue, long sleeves, I think in Michigan State, like that's for the States, but Whatever the you know the tournament is, whatever the requirements are for lab coats and goggles and all that stuff, 
that's always it. Oh, I forgot my goggles, you know, and you're running across campus. I've been there. <laughs> Wrong goggles. We got to go get more. Um, uh, look at the schedule. Just make sure that you don't have any conflicts with the students. Um, like I said, doing an invitational, that helps. Um, do test, test. I'm sorry, so put rules questions in team tryout tests or event practice tests. I think that's, you know, do practice tests to like evaluate, you know, if you have more than 15, you're trying to figure out who goes on the competition teams, you can do practice tests and things like that. Um, plan ahead on ninth graders, how many ninth graders are allowed on B teams and 12th graders on C teams. And Matt, help me out. I, I don't remember off the top of my head seven seniors yeah. that hasn't changed right no okay um yeah don't turn probably just give your cell phone to the parent when they're going into an event you don't want to have them pull it out because it's it's a habit for for me for you know for most adults even you know to oh uh, let me look at the time you pull out your phone so you don't want to get you don't want to have to put a supervisor in a spot where they're going to have to disqualify you because you're looking at your phone so Better just not have them at all. Okay. Um, yeah, feeding. If you have like crack team practice type sessions, you know, food always gets kids there. So, okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else I wanted to put in there? I think. Oh yeah. Any questions? Go ahead. I always struggle with campuses. Because, like, so this year, for the first time, robot tour. Um, the helicopter's brand new. Um, I think it's at least one more event. Uh, bungee, maybe a camera bungee fit. What do you guys recommend for that? Like, I always ask Paul, and Paul defers and never answers me. Well, <laughs> for, for for helicopters, yes, get the kit. But well, sure. we're planning. We are we we are we are planning to do that for uh we call it our, our registration kit. So it's just like each team. So we are planning to do that unless they come back. We're talking with them right now about price. So unless they come back with a ridiculous price, we plan to buy a helicopter kit for every team. Okay, so we'll let you know in the, in the next couple of weeks when we find out for sure. Um, and then we got to figure out how to get them to you. Okay, that was a struggle last year. So um, we'll let you know if that's definitely a for sure. And then we'll have them like at the workshop in December. If you want it earlier, we can figure out a way to pick it up from my house or something like that. So, um, but. But that's that's the current plan. So hold off. Don't just go buy them right yet. Give us a couple of weeks to negotiate that because we're trying to get kits for everybody. Um, I don't know. Is that's like there's there's links to the ward stuff from the national website there was there was a vehicle kit last year that was a third party kit that came up and the state allowed them i i don't imagine they're going to do anything different this year it was like a 3d printed kit it looked like a very a pretty good vehicle kit i i haven't i haven't looked to see if if it's out there again this year and i don't remember the name of the website Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know what else there would be kits for it. There might, like I said, there might be like an electric vehicle and a scrambler kit out there. Yeah. Okay. I would go, I, hang on, hold off in the helicopter. We're talking to Freedom Flight and they're usually the best kits. Um, and 
So, and I think it's enough to build two helicopters in the kits. Yeah. So we're we're working on that. That's the plan right now is to provide every team with one of those. If something changes on that, we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. question. Anyone know? Go ahead. Okay. And um, I met a dilemma. Um, I thought I was going to be divorced to everybody on his teams, but now I've got like 37 interested families. Wow. And I don't know what to do. I know that's a good problem to have, but <laughs> I just was hoping that I wouldn't have to like turn people away, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't have a test. I think Mr. Reed does not know what happened to his Google Drive or something, so I don't know if somebody can help me. I was going to originally just send out a list and say, you know, I was going to put experienced people in and also like eighth graders um, straight on the varsity yeah. and then everybody else fit on JV. But now I'm at a point where I don't even know what to do when I'm going back. I had a meeting last night with the parents and the kids and, I, you know, after meeting with them, I realized that I had more come on after I started meeting. So I just don't know what to do. So if anybody wants to help me. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. Other fundraising, NDIA, and asking for that small amount of pay to participate. I think you could just keep everything going. I would love to. I didn't know you could have two alternate teams. Yeah, so that would be you do too. And the school might cover. And the school might cover your registration. Yeah, I think I will. I, I would think love it that. probably I would literally like. I would talk to. Them. I would. I would say I wouldn't be surprised if if. You lose some kids through. Yeah. You don't want to plan for that. Yeah. Like you, you could have a coach for something, and there's four or five kids, which is a little more. Yeah. You know, and if it's a parent who has a child and they're inviting three or four other kids, and if they're up for that, fine. I mean, the more the merrier, I think. But it is a little more. Difficult. It's like having a little class instead of like two kids showing yeah. up. Yeah. And figuring out who who the top kids are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Well, that would be come from like practice tests yeah. and invitational. Go to an invitational and, and sign both teams. You know, two teams or three teams up and see how they how they come out. <laughs> Yeah. And sometimes an event coach is going to end up having their child on the alternate team, and that's okay. Sometimes that's going to work out that way, but most of the time, when parents are coaching their kids, they're probably one of the better kids in the event. Yeah. They live with them. <laughs> and they're talking about it more, and you know, it's more of a culture in the house instead of a kid showing up at the house to practice, you know? Yeah, I know when my son was in, basically they asked each parent to coach an event, you know. Yeah. Like I said, he was in helicopters and the mom knew nothing about it. But like I said, she said, you're going to come to my house every Thursday. You're going to work on building it from six to eight and test them. And 
just and you oh, you need the kit okay we'll buy the kit you know and just help get resources maybe look up some practice tests if it's a testing event you know but you know just putting them in a room and making them work for a couple hours is you know big part of the challenge for some kids <laughs> register for the alternate teams until December 13th. So you can keep everybody going. And then like if we could leap off and you end up with just one alternate team, then you know you're fine. I did do the, the once you register, you know, it's another thing where well I actually don't have the kids and then you have the university license. The only exception is if you're registering a team for an invitational then yeah but the invitationals are January, right? But you, you have to general register, general. they have to be registered to participate at those invitations. So if you have alternate student, you know, alternates extra more than 15, they have to be like under that umbrella, you know, that state umbrella and our region. So for instance, if you want to make a review of an invitational, you should go into the website. Mm -hmm. Whenever it opens, it's closed within a day, I believe, right? Oh, gee. <laughs> Yeah, and and, the, and that's not necessarily. I mean, if if you go to Plymouth Canton or or there's Frankenmuth, because U of M, the one thing at U of M is even if your kids are pretty good, they're probably going to come in like 15. You know, I mean, it's really competitive at U of M. Yeah, they get Indiana teams come in, Ohio teams come in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what I don't know. What did Stevenson finish last year at U of M? Oh, okay. But but you know, but yeah, it's brutal. You're not meddling. No, no, <laughs> no. They might. I, no, I shouldn't say that. But but it is. It it is. It's it's that tournament is harder than our state tournament. So uh, U of M is like uh, February seventeenth. I think it's. Usually around think uh, Valentine's Day. Is it the fifteenth? Somewhere in there. Is it really? Oh no. Well, Frankenmuth's having a B tournament. Frankenmuth has a B tournament and a C tournament. <laughs> we can raise all kinds of money for you. No, for next year, honestly, I would I would love to get invitationals back into Macomb County so that the I mean having Great Lakes was great because all the Macomb County teams could just go there. It's just down the road, easy to get to. Um, I know as far as you, we will come help you, you know, as long as it's not on the same day as like, you know, something else, we, you know, one of our workshops or something like that, which we won't schedule it on that day. But like I said, we will help with, with, you know, running the tournament, the actual day of, and, you know, things like that. But I'd love to see an, a, a C tur an invitational back and a B invitational back. But with that, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, the U of M is run by the Science Olympiad uh, Club. So if Oakland had a Science Olympiad Club, maybe they would run something. I'm sure there's kids at Oakland that, that were involved in Science Olympiad. There are a lot of them from our region going over there. Just no traction. Yeah. But... Yeah. Okay. Well, that's like I said. I would love to see one come back, and and we'd do whatever we could to help whoever wants to run it. Um, you make some money for your team. You know, you can go buy the greatest robot tour kit ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. I've always coached at the middle school level. Yeah. My biggest challenge is always finding 
high school, it seems like the model of the coach is just this student run, yeah. student coach. Is that is that how everybody's doing it? Is this your yeah. Yeah. And that Good works out. Well, I'm the head coach and they and yeah. my daughter runs it and she is the she's the president. She just has everybody sign up for their events and hands out the roles and they do their thing. Yeah, we have to have parents coach. Um, but not every event. We can't get every event called covered, so the kids cover those events. But I make sure that they're prepared, you know, they have the materials they need and they have the resources that they need. You know, and they and uh they need accountability. So it, it depends largely on the students. Unfortunately, I can't give you the first part of the answer. The only answer is that was always one of the questions I would put in my introductory survey at the beginning. You know, parents, uh, are, are your parents willing to help? Do they be interested in coaching event or just helping? Our very nice answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they feel like, well, I'm not an expert in this. Yeah. They don't have to be, but they don't know that. Yeah. You know, like, being a teacher, it's easy to work with a bunch of kids. Now, it's regular, but for parents, it's not. It's, it's not. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember, like I said, my son moved up to junior high. This You got to coach Mission Possible. My wife was, my wife coached in elementary. And then she looked at the rules for Mission Possible and wanted to cry. <laughs> so she said, you got to do this. <laughs> so that's how I got involved. But yeah, no, it's overwhelming, you know, for some of those things. Um, that's why, you know, the coaches clinic, the extravaganza, our workshops. Um, I mean, we're not always, you know, great. But if you go to some of those different things, you'll pick up some different things. You know, I like to think we do pretty good workshops. But, you know, it's probably hit and miss. I'm sure there's some of them that aren't as good as the others, but um, it should help. It, it can't hurt. <laughs> but to partner with the middle school head coach, because there's several of them that are both division B and division C, and it's the same concept. I mean, it's, you can go a little further with high school, but it's the same rules for both. So put all those kids together. If you have one coach for what you're doing, put all those kids together. And give yeah. time that everybody can. And that coach who has done it in the past can work with everybody. Instead of finding two different dynamic planning coaches, you got one. That's how I, like, we never got 23, ever. Like, there was always a six, six events, like, somewhere in November. Like you cannot find somebody. You, you tap out the kids on the team. But if you've got the high school team too, that you are you know the coach, you can combine your efforts. You know what my yep. daughter does? Then whoever signs up, they go with however many people they have and divide out the events. So all events are covered and you either have three or four events, ah, depending on the people. Right. So a lot of parents, unless like they have two kids on the team or you know. Yeah, like I said, former students, you know. Former students are like, I know the ones that go off to college, like, there's only a reasonable 50,000 people. Um, but if they're local and they love that event and they did well in that event, like, they might help. And maybe it's not going to be every week, maybe it's going to be every two weeks, but it's something. Or it could be virtual. Yeah, yeah virtual. College, as well. Well. Yeah. It wasn't really something we used to do, but that's totally different. If you've got a senior in high school and he's done that event 
Yeah, right. Doesn't need a coach. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to get them to be event supervisors. <laughs> mentoring program where we have several colleges and alumni students who are at college but they want to reach out and they, they want to help or, or from their science field they have college they want to reach out to a team and help coach a team so take a look at that on that um, but all the communication would go through you as a head coach and then setting up that those meetings would be virtual because they're at the colleges so that's another. I don't have names of people, but you yeah, mentioned yeah. the coaches corner. Yeah. This mentoring discussion. If you go to there and Barb has the question now, like, yeah. Hey, is there is there anybody in this area who might be willing to help coach the kids? Remember the kids. You'll probably get a half a dozen responses. So I yeah. So I'm a Division B, and it, you probably wouldn't go there, but for the state, I'm a Division B mentor so for people or parents who don't their school does not have a team and they're considering their, their child is missing out on this wonderful program but there's no team so yeah so i help them understand what it takes to start a team and how to form the team and maybe like you know within the school how to recruit kids like that kind of stuff that's what i do i'm not but i'm not coaching students you know what i'm saying that's not my role i'm just trying to get the program started um, in places where there isn't a whole thing. And then there's another counterpart who does the, the simulation. His name is not, I think he's doing not, yeah, not the killer. If you email the C, you're going to get not. If you email, you email. But if you even had a question about coaching, you're a new coach, you're a new coach, you don't have to go there. You can just email me <laughs> and we can exchange information. So I have no problem. Just answering questions or helping you figure this out because we have a lot of students. And it's going to be, yeah, there's a budget there that needs to be considered. But find out from your principal or your secretary what happened last year because they probably did pay. There was a budget team last year and the rates went down. Nobody knows what happened last year. Oh, there was no team. There was no coach. Wow, that is so cool that yeah. that's happening. And you got that many kids back this year. That's that's amazing because usually if it goes away for a year, good luck getting the kids back. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of things you could do with the Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I've got kids coming from Shawnee, Ojibwa, Cheyenne. They're very, very active. Chippewa Bell has such a strong yeah. uh, elementary program that, that there's so many kids that have done it already that are interested. So that helps. Smaller age graders, because it's about fast graders. I hope that it'll keep that momentum. No. That's great. I just want to add, um, we always go to Thanks for coming, guys. Yep. Yeah.